Let's just talk about inclusiveness and budgets uh, using Zambia as a case study. The Republic of Zambia proposing to spend 167.3 billion kwacha in the 2023 financial year. That's about $11.1 billion. Domestic debt servicing, about 30.5 billion kwacha. Uh, healthcare, 17.4. External debt servicing, 18.2 billion. Education, 32.2 billion kwacha. But uh, inclusion, there are a number of gaps, uh, says our next guest, Betty Wilkinson, a financial markets advisor, joining us from Lusaka uh, to discuss uh, the uh, budget. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Good uh, afternoon to you. I think you're an hour ahead of us uh, in Nigeria. You have highlighted uh, three key gaps in the 2023 Zambian budget. You say uh, gender, aspects of economic inclusion, and uh, informal to formal growth. Can you elaborate for us, please, on those gaps? Sure. Thanks for having me. And I'll also talk a little bit about Nigeria and what the comparators are. Let's talk about gender now. Uh, it's about 15% in the parliament who are female, about the same kind of numbers in, who are ministers. But what we're seeing is we're seeing growth of women at the top. So, for example, you were just talking about banking. There's now two major banks that have women as the CEOs, both of which are now getting known for profitability and for innovation. So let's talk about now what's the situation in Nigeria. Less than 6% of the people who are elected in the national parliament are female. And in the last year, less than 1% of the budget was targeted towards women's empowerment and activities associated with women. And if you don't do it, the evidence and research is clear. Women are good at saving. They're good at addressing e uh, emergencies. They're great at sorting out family situations and small enterprises. And if you don't pay close attention to them, especially when they're half of the population, your economy is not going to grow. It's not going to be as sustainable. Now let's talk about the situation of inclusion. Inclusion, there are two key areas that the IMF has identified as being important for inclusion and inclusive economy. One is that the civil service has to work pretty effectively. And the, the recent reviews of the civil service in Nigeria says that the Nigerian civil servants need to have better decision-making processes and more accountable financial and reporting on their actual results that they're supposed to be achieving. The second thing is on subsidies. There are a large number of subsidies in the, in the Nigerian budget, and there are also subsidies in the Zambian budget. We're having a hard look at them. How can we graduate people out of these subsidies where it's possible and sensible to do so? The third thing is, and it's the big one for all across Africa, is informal businesses. In Nigeria, almost 90% of your total business activity is done informally. That, and largely, those are dominated by women. So you've got people in the street selling things. You've got food production. You've got activities in agricultural and rural areas. And informal businesses tend to be smaller, tend to be people who are poorer and less well-educated. They're not connected to the tax system. And they have a real hard time getting money from uh, the banks or other financial institutions so that they can actually have working capital and grow. So these are the three big issues. Uh, there's certainly a problem in, in Zambia. There's a bigger problem in Nigeria. And I think that it's really important to say, how are we going to address these? Exactly. Yeah. So can, can you give us, I guess, some you know, recommendations on how these, these gaps in Zambia, in Nigeria, you know, can be addressed? Well, pay attention to women, not rocket science, but socially it's a challenge. So, you know, how many of your reporters are female? How many of the CEOs are female? What's going on with getting them moved up into the system and then empowering them to actually do the job? Because we know around the world that if women are at the top, the companies are more profitable and they're more innovative. So pay attention, provide this information publicly. Really 1% of your budget, this is embarrassing. You need to step up. The second thing uh, with regard to civil servants, Nigeria's done some great research on this, looking at how do we make civil servants more accountable? How do we make the budgets more accountable? And just implement it. You've got the answers, just implement them. I think the third one is the hardest one, and that is informal finance and informal businesses. And the trick is that the, there are so many rules or so many complex aspects of registering a business, paying taxes, paying all the fees that are due when you have an employee, 
this all has to be made a lot simpler, a lot easier. There's even discussion in some countries about what for the first year, register people and don't require that they pay taxes. Instead, make sure that they're keeping appropriate records, use digital, digital finance and digital services. And then also have them understand if you've got your records, then you can go into a bank, show them your records, show them your registration, and it'll be much easier to start talking about financial services that you need. Great stuff. Um, I mean, uh, looking at the year ahead, 2023, with all these gaps you've mentioned and the mm -hmm. recommendations, are you optimistic that if we're to have this conversation a year from now in October of uh, 2023, going into 2024, that we would have seen mm -hmm. uh, improvements in some of these areas? In Zambia, I can speak to it because I am very close to the question. And what I see is the promises that were made a year ago no more school fees in public, the public domain. Five times as much money going into, into local community funds where the communities are deciding together, women and churches and uh, traditional leaders and others. They're all making decisions together on what we really needed most in the areas. So those are step up areas that this government has delivered on and they are moving forward. The kids are, it's amazing to see the kids in school like this now. And now they're investing in more staff, they're investing in more infrastructure to make sure that those services can be delivered, along with activities associated with social cash transfers for the poorest. And those are graduation programs. They'll get out of poverty as a result of this. So it's all there in the first year. Now what we're saying is step up with this stuff and do it next. The president, the new president and the Zambian government have said, okay, and this is how we're going to do it. And they are delivering. It takes time. You know, this is not something you rush with. With uh, the circumstances in Nigeria, I would be asking the government, the public, the private sector, okay, so how are we going to do this? It's important. How are we going to do this? How do we step up? Um, finally, does, does population play a role here? Zambia's population is... I think about 18 or 19 million, right? That can, you can fit mm -hmm. that inside one city uh, in Lagos. So you got Lagos, of course, our last guest or guest prior before the last one was talking about Lagos. I mean, Nigeria having the largest mm -hmm. out of school population in the world. So is that, is that a major challenge when you, you know, compare the two and the challenges they have to, you know, uh, to, to surmount? So I was actually in Nigeria in the 80s, and I'm watching how it's emerging and what's changing. And digitization is exciting. That's moving fast. That's a form of learning. If a kid has a, a cell phone, they can use it for learning. So I think that what we say is Nigeria has a bigger problem because it has a bigger population. But it doesn't mean that you can't start solving the problems now. Betty Wilkinson, Financial Markets Advisor from Lusaka, joining us from Lusaka Live. We appreciate your time talking to us about these gaps that can be filled for the Republic of Zambia and also the Federal Republic of Nigeria as well. Thank you so much uh, for joining us.